as close as you're going to get to it. Uh, and know that in no uncertain terms it's authentic, that uh, pilgrims have trodden this way before, perhaps uh, uh, driven by the same kind of impulses that drove you. You know, that guy in the movie who paid a fee to come here and, you know, years worth of wages, he's not the only one that's done that. Others have paid dearly to come and walk in the, you know, do the same sort of thing. And so um, Aaron will come in a moment and uh, explain a little bit about the site. And then I wanted to give you a few minutes to uh, meander about a little bit. But I'm wondering if someone could lead us in the song, We Are Standing on Holy Ground. And uh, any takers on that? Yeah. Where's Penny Whistle, Becky? to the film, at the part, this cup, what is it? <laughs> Maybe it was, <laughs> remember that in the movie? Maybe it was this, Maybe it was it. Anyone guess what the lady was there for? Temptation. 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 Yes. It's red hot. Okay. Jeff's talking about Jesus walking up here. We saw in the movie, he talked about three times a year coming up. What's the theme of the film? Pilgrimage. Pilgrimage. Okay, they come up, they do, they come on their long journey. Here, they get to the mikvaot, the Jewish ritual uh, pools that you see all around. Josephus says that there were up to two million people during Pesach, Passover. People say he exaggerates a little bit, but there must have been mass and mass and mass amount of people, not just Jews from living in Israel, Jews from around the world, Alexandria in uh, Egypt. They come up with their sacrifice. The physical journey ends here. Now the spiritual really begins. Okay, what, what is their focus? Sacrifice. The Hebrew word sacrifice, korban. The root of korban is the word karov, which means to draw near. The idea of getting closer and closer, drawing near. And as you're focused, all of a sudden you look over and there's this beautiful looking girl. Okay, the idea is distractions distractions when we are to meet the Lord we are easily distracted or at least some of you men are no I'm joking it's the same at home you you got to have a quiet time the phone rings uh, just whatever a dozen different things that can distract us and that's the idea of putting that in so they come up they take their sacrifices they may have to go to the market first to pay for a sacrifice if they didn't bring it themselves. And uh, then they would go offer up that, they hand that sacrifice over to the, the priest. So these are the stairs that they came up. These, most of these are reconstructed. You see a few original state stairs. These are the stairs that Peter, James and John came up in the book of Acts where it talks about the gate beautiful where the, uh, the men are begging for arms. And uh, Peter looked at him and said, silver and gold have I not, but such is what I have I give thee in the name of Jesus of Nazareth. Stand up, and he stood up and walked. You know, they say he was the only man in the Bible that was asking for arms and got legs. <laughs> oh. <laughs> 
you can see on the wall here a piece of like concrete that's original from what's called the Hulda Gate. The Hulda Gate that's mentioned in the Talmud. You'll look over where I'm pointing over here, you'll see three gates. This is called the Triple Gate. These were closed up in the 11th century by the Muslims. They were gates that you would also go in through to get up onto the Temple Mount. The Temple, friends, was... You saw the Golden Dome? They say it was three times higher. You could see it anywhere in Jerusalem, and you could smell it anywhere because of the, not only the sacrifices, but the fragrances. You could hear the temple anywhere because of the shofar blasting and because of the singing, the praise that was going on. Was that all the time or just during the Well, as far as the Levitical priesthood, that was 24-7. It was a morning and an evening sacrifice? Are the sacrifices were morning and evening? Yes. <coughs> Any questions? Any other questions? Out of all the stones I've seen, that's the only one I've ever seen that was round. <laughs> Whereabouts? Oh, uh, yes. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, a lo lo you'll look to the left of that round one, you'll see at the end, that's a classic Herodian stone. We know that because he put a special dressing around. So what's a round and a Herodian stone? A lot of these walls that you see, as I mentioned, was built up in the 16th century. So he, Suleiman the Magnificent, or the Muslims in the 11th century, a lot of them, these stones are what's called secondary use, where they would take them, and put them in just to fill up the gap. But that is a classic Herodian stone that he mentioned in the film that even the smallest ones are about two and a half uh, tons. Okay, so let's take, say, five or ten minutes, five minutes to... Uh, between likely to highly likely that Jesus could have turned the markets in this area somewhere near here. When did Jesus go up to the temple? Well, we know when he was a little baby, he was dedicated. Remember the story of Simeon? When he was 12? During the feasts? Where else? Remember the devil took him to the corner? Okay, so that's at least that we know of. He probably was up there a lot more. But this would have been the marketplaces where they sold things, where they uh, sold sacrifices, and there were money changes. And it just got out of hand. There was nothing wrong with those markets. It just got out of hand. It became a money-making business in the temple. You can see the remains of the street where the stones that were thrown down over here by the Romans, Titus and his father Vespasian. <laughs> by the way, everyone, did you know that the first temple was destroyed on a month, a day in the, and month called the ninth day of Av, the Tisha Ba'av, the ninth of Av. Did you know that the second temple was destroyed on exactly the same day? interestingly enough and that day the ninth day above today is remembered as a holy day because it wasn't just the first and te second temples that were destroyed on that day historically we've had the spanish inquisition when the jews from spain and morocco were expelled on the ninth day above the the <coughs> jews from london in 1290 were expelled and apparently Hitler's henchmen ordered the final solution or the exporting of Jews on the ninth day of Abba. That's why when a Jewish man gets married on the height of his life he remembers 
the destruction of the first and second temple by getting a cup and a napkin and he smashes the cup to remember hmm. the destructions of the temples. Although there is another interpretation to that. They say it's the last time that a man gets to put his foot down. <laughs> <laughs> I like that one. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Look at birds. These are there. Yes, these are stones. Two other things. Three other things. There's a hole in the wall here. According, can you see the hole there? According to Islamic theology, the silver dome, which we saw before, which is called the El Aqsa Mosque. El Aqsa means to the furthest place. According to Islam, Muhammad had a horse called El Burak that flew to the furthest place, which apparently was here. And apparently when Muhammad was here, he tied his horse to that hole and he ascended from the Temple Mount. You can see his footprint uh, under the, the dome on the rock. By the way, that golden dome is called the Dome on the Rock because it's considered by Jews and Muslims to be the place where Abraham offered up who? Isaac. 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 No, oh, actually, a, a ram. The Judeo-Christian belief is that it's Isaac, but Muslims <laughs> believe it's Ishmael. And they have an annual day holiday to celebrate that. It's also considered to be the place where the foundation stone was laid when God began the creation of the world. So Mount Moriah and the foundation stone. Some people believe that it could be actually the Garden of Eden. It's a different topic. Any questions? 